there's been an evolution in terms of the way we've done hip replacement because we've been doing it now over 30 years, almost 40 years. And the evolution has been in the design of the materials and how we fix the implants to the bone. Initially, we used metal and plastic articulations, and then we spent a lot of time looking at other surfaces to reduce the wear. Because you move your hip a million and a half cycles a year. So any two surfaces you put in contact a million and a half cycles a year are going to wear. This, for example, is a hip replacement of a more current design. This is made out of solid titanium. And it has flutes on it here, which help with fixation into the bone. But more importantly is it has a covering in this upper part here of something called hydroxyapatite, which is what bone is made of. So basically when this is inserted into the bone, bone sees bone and grows into the device. And that's how the fixation occurs. Now the other thing you notice here, <clears throat> this is the ball, and the ball in this case is ceramic. So this is a very, very dense ceramic this has been in a drawer bouncing around for probably six or seven years, and you can still see the surface of that ceramic is still pristine. This is the socket, and you can see that the back of this socket, this is also titanium, uh, has all these little shiny areas, and these are beads. And there are probably five million small beads on the back surface of that socket then the bone will grow in between all those beads. In this case, this is a plastic insert, very, very wear resistant. This material wears at, and we've measured it, 0.7 of one millimeter in 10 years. So there's enough plastic in there to last 40 or 50 years. So then when the socket goes in, the femur goes in, then basically that's how the hip links together. And so the hip then moves as a normal hip would, and the soft tissues or muscles then incorporate around this device to give it stability, and then are attached to the bone and, and make this prosthesis work. Fixation of the device is twofold, uh, both on this side and this side. And the fixation is first what I call press fit. And basically what that means is that we channel out the femur bone and then when I drive this into the bone, it takes on that configuration and the bone is absolutely tight against that. So you get a press fit and then the bone itself and the surrounding surface of the implant then actually grows into these little surfaces. And that's where the actual secondary stability comes from. So you really got two fixations here. You got the press fit, press fit here where it's contacts there and then you actually got the bone ingrowth into the device to lock it in. So they tend to be very, very tight. Pain is a question that always comes up when you discuss surgery with a patient. And the good news about hip replacement surgery, of all the arthroplasties, joint replacements, that we do, I think hip replacement is the least painful. And the reason for that is that if you have hip arthritis, it is very disabling and very painful. People can't walk, they can't go up and down stairs, they have trouble sleeping at night, and immediately in the recovery room, that pain is gone. And we mobilize our patients very quickly. We mobilize our patients out of bed the next day and sometimes the same day. And that also, I think, facilitates recovery, but it also, I think, in fact, reduces pain. The swelling is less as they move about. I would say the hardest thing after surgery is getting out of bed because you do need to flex at your hip. Most patients do extremely well as far as walking and taking weight on their operated leg and most of them are surprised at how well they do. But as a rule, with hip replacement surgery, most of the pain is gone, or very minimal, quickly, within two or three days. One of the other real advances in hip replacement surgery has been acceleration of rehabilitation. We do have a fast track program that um, if the patient meets certain criteria that if they're under 65 years of age they have a BMI of 25 they can walk two to three blocks with a cane prior to surgery they may be appropriate for this program. I believe you should move your patients very quickly so 20 years ago if you had a hip replacement you didn't get out of bed for four or five days and that's all changed. We will get the patients out of bed sometimes the same day of the operation. So I'll operate on them in the morning, 
and I'll sit them up in the afternoon, and I'll stand them in the evening, and maybe even walk them. We initiate physical therapy the day of surgery, and they do receive physical therapy twice a day, um, starting on the day of surgery, and they are discharged within 48 hours home. Now, those patients who are very disabled, who are elderly, will leave, the patient will leave the hospital and go to a rehabilitation center. So they'll generally go on day three or day four, because they're a little slower. So the average hospital stay for a fit person is about three days. Patients always ask, when can I return to activities? When can I go back to doing what I want to do and what are my limitations? Once you've had your hip replaced, there are not a lot of limitations. We want people to be active. The reason we're doing this operation is restore them to mobility and relieve their pain. So I encourage my patients to be active. That means I want the patient to go back if they want to play sports. I let patients ski, hike, golf, tennis, preferably doubles, uh, so they get back and do most things that they want to do. Patients would leave here with a cane. They're usually off the cane, walking well, in the house within a couple of weeks. And most patients are off the cane completely within four to six weeks. So recovery tends to be very quick, actually. And what I tell the patients is that they're usually 85 to 90 percent recovered at six weeks and that last 10 or 15 percent takes another six weeks. So before you're absolutely as good as you're going to be with a hip replacement, it's probably two to three months.